get an exposure like this from the back. And here is just, you can look in paracondylar. We usually save some of that venous wall over these nerves. And if you can do that, then you preserve, uh, uh, usually preserve these nerves. So, uh, <laughs> but here's the roof of the jugular foramen. And in the cistern, nine is often a care at the 10. You can't tell nine from 10. But always at the roof of the jugular foramen, there's a dural septum between nine and 10. And we call this the glossopharyngeal meatus, a little cave that nine enters. And this is the vagal meatus that 10 and 11 pass through at the dural roof of the foramen. So here we see jugular foramen. The inferior petrosal sinus passes through the petrosal part. Sigmoid passes through the larger sigmoid part. And we blow this up, petrosal part, sigmoid part, intrajugular part with 9, 10, 11. And these are, what is that now? That's 12. And it enters a bifid hypoglossal canal. When you see that, usually the two bundles of rootlets join before they reach the extracranial end of the hypoglossal canal. And then you can remove the jugular ball from the jugular fossa. And we see 9, origin of Jacobson's hair, 10, Arnold's nerve, uh, cranial and spinal 11, and here's 12 passing through the hypoglossal canal in a supracondylar location, and they all join in the carotid sheath just below the foramen. So that if we look from below now, internal jugular vein, uh, some of the relationships on the front, you have the carotid artery and pathology out of the bulb could follow the carotid. Here's the eustachian tube and pathology in the jugular bulb can follow the eustachian tube forward. Laterally here we have the, what is that? Facial nerve, styloid. Here we see 12 coming above the condyle and joining the nerves in the carotid sheath. And what muscle is this? Rectus, caffinus, lateralis that attaches to the skull base. Here's the condyle. It attaches just lateral to the condyle behind the jugular foramen. And here we detach that muscle we drilled out the occipital bone condyle. Part of it is still here, hypoglossal nerve. We drilled it out in a paracondylar approach to expose the back of the jugular foramen. But we said most pathology in the jugular fossa extends forward down the eustachian tube, along the carotid, follows the quarta tympani, gets into the infratemporal fossa, and you have the facial nerve directly lateral. So for this, we use a postauricular incision that you can fold this flap forward and follow the pathology anteriorly. And here's facial nerve lateral to jugular ball and the carotid sheath uh, so that often this pathology will extend forward. You can follow it forward, carotid going to middle fossa. What nerve is that? That runs on the upper surface of the petrous carotid. 
GSP and and where it infratemporal temporal fossa and from there it runs forward in the what is that? Vidian nerve. Uh, headed for the Pergo Palatine fossa that we talked about yesterday. So and just another view of this, but carotid inside the carotid shape, uh, facial nerve descending laterally. Uh, for these approaches, we move the facial nerve forward, and we want to preserve the stylo mastoid artery that supplies the facial nerve. So we do a posterior incision. We expose the mastoid and do a neck dissection, uh, combine the two. We often have to resect at least the posterior half of the external auditory canal. And here we turned up a little flap of fascia to use in closing the canal. And then we drill out the mastoid ectomy that you've already done. Uh, and we have facial nerve descending lateral to the jugular ball here. It descends lateral to the jugular ball that's in an infralabyrinthine position. There's facial nerve, and this is part of tympany. What canal? Lateral posterior. So you've already done part of this approach, but often to get into the jugular bulb, you have to move this facial nerve forward. It's an anterior transposition. If you save a cup of tissue at the stylo mastoid foramen and preserve this stylo mastoid artery, usually you do this and there's no facial weakness. Uh, here now we freed up the facial nerve, lateral, posterior canal. What bone is this? Incus. And this is stapes here, below the facial nerve, lateral canal above. What is this? Eustachian tube that opens forward. And you usually, we've resected the posterior half of the external canal, but you get forward on the ball, and especially if the carotid's involved, you often have to resect the external canal, remove the tympanic membrane, jugular fossa pathology can get into the middle there, run down the eustachian tube, so that this is the exposure. The bulb has been exposed now. The facial nerve descends directly lateral. We save a cup of tissue around the nerve and save the stylomastoid artery. You usually have to resect some of the ossicles, but when you move the facial nerve forward, if you leave the stapes in the oval window, you can preserve some hairy. Here we see the petrosal part of the foramen. Here the sigmoid part of the foramen. And then in this notch, the interjugular part, is where the nerves are going to pass through between the petrosal and sigmoid part of the foramen. And the pathology in this area usually occludes the jugular ball so that you can ligate the sigmoid and the internal jugular vein, and you can look in behind the sigmoid, open retrosigmoid. Here we see A910. You can ligate the sigmoid, and the jugular vein are usually occluded, and you can open it. And if you, once you ligated and resected this lateral half of the vein, if you save the medial venous wall, then you can protect 9, 10, 11, and 
And this is what nerve is that? Coming through between 10 and 11 that's going backwards. That's 12 that's going to run forward to the tongue. But if you preserve this medial venous wall, you can usually preserve all of those nerves. Here's the petrosal part of the foramen. Uh, but if you have to resect that medial venous wall, then you're working directly on the surface of the nerves, and it's uh, very hard to preserve these nerves, and you can work at it. But uh, once that medial venous wall comes up, by the risk of the nerves, greatly increases. There's nine, the other nerves, after the venous wall is elevated. Here's the stapes still in the oval window, so hearing is preserved. So this is a tour uh, through posterior lateral skull base, um, uh, far lateral. Uh, I thank you all so much for allowing me to join you, and uh, I love being a part of this great surgical team that uh, uh, Professor Robertson has assembled here. Uh, thank you so much.